Hello, everyone. Bonjour à tous. Thank you for joining us for this important announcement. I am Annie Koutrakis, Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Transport. I will also be your host today. Je vous parle aujourd'hui des territoires autochtones de plusieurs nations. I'd like now to invite the Minister of Transport, the Honorable Omar al Gabra, to speak. Thank you very much, Annie. Bonjour à tous. Good morning, everyone. Ooh, there we go. Um, it's a pleasure to be here with you uh, this morning, along with my colleagues, uh, obviously, Annie Kotrakis, Francis, Rachel, Samir, and Angelo. And I know, as well, my uh, colleagues, Minister Champagne and Minister Rodriguez, would have liked to be with us here today, and others. I know there's so many of our colleagues I've been uh, looking forward to this day and uh, would have liked to be with us today. Uh, and they send uh, 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 their enthusiasm and regrets as well. But it is a pleasure to be back here in beautiful Montreal with you today. C'est un plaisir d'être à Montréal. Last summer, I was in Montreal with my colleagues announcing our intention to build the high frequency rail project and start engaging communities and the private sector. We have committed to Canadians that we will continue to push for efficient, affordable, and green transportation. Last election, we committed to taking the next step on the high-frequency rail project, which will transform the way millions of Canadians can get around for a generation. Well, today I'm here to announce that we are moving to the next phase in making this dream a reality. Aujourd'hui, on fait avancer la train à grande fréquence. I'm pleased to share that we are launching the next phase in the procurement process of the high-frequency rail project. On lance une nouvelle étape. We're publishing a request for expressions of interest. Nous publions on demand, demand des déclarations d'entrée. This will invite the private sector to formally express their interest in partnering with the government to build this historic project. The request for expressions of interest describes the Government of Canada's vision for high-frequency rail and objectives to improve passenger rail service. It explains how we plan to work with the private sector and communities as the project unfolds. We want to identify our key partners who will work with us on moving forward. On veut identifier nos partenaires. This request seeks responses from private sector companies with experience in complex infrastructure projects. The call for expressions of interests also outlines the government's priorities in a private sector partner. We want partners that will respect workers and protect their benefits, who will make indigenous collaboration a cornerstone of their proposal and who will maximize good service for Canadians. After, after the, examining the expressions of interest, we will be receiving we will launch a formal request for qualifications and a request for proposal. With this launch, we will get closer to choosing a private partner to co-develop the high-frequency rail project. On se rapproche de trouver un partenaire privé. This project will fundamentally transform passenger rail service in Canada's busiest corridor. It is the largest transportation infrastructure in Canada's history. Il changera la façon de voyager au pays. This is a VIA project, and VIA will play a critical role throughout the project. High-frequency rail would represent the biggest investment in passenger rail in a generation. So it needs to be done right. On doit la faire correctement. We are also sending a clear message to our private sector partners that indigenous peoples and communities 
must play an important role throughout this project, including collaboration with indigenous businesses. On, on encourage la collaboration avec les entreprises autochtones. High frequency rail will offer more direct routes with improved connectivity between cities like Quebec City, Trois-Rivières, and Montréal. HFR is expected to be operational in the early 2030s with construction potentially beginning in the mid 2020s. This project is about supporting economic growth and creating jobs and opportunities within the sector. La projet va soutenir la croissance. It's about providing greener travel options and it's about creating accessible, resilient, modern and sustainable transportation infrastructure that will benefit generations to come. And finally, this project is about nation building. It is a historic project that will transform our transportation network for generations to come. Thank you all for being here. Merci. C'est un peu dangereux. <rire> Merci, Monsieur le ministre. Comme le ministre Algabra vient de le dire, les Canadiens sont en droit d'avoir un service ferroviaire rapide et fiable. C'est pourquoi le gouvernement du Canada en est aux premières étapes du processus d'approvisionnement du projet de train à grande fréquence. Nous publions une demande de déclaration d'intérêt. We're publishing a request for expressions of interest. Ce processus vise à attirer des entreprises expérimentées du secteur privé qui souhaitent conclure un partenariat avec nous dans le cadre de ce projet. La demande de déclaration d'intérêt expose la vision du gouvernement du Canada pour le train à grande fréquence, ainsi que la façon dont il prévoit de travailler avec le secteur privé et les communautés au fil du projet. Son lancement nous rapprochons du choix d'un partenaire, partenaire du secteur privé qui nous fera profiter de son expertise et de sa capacité d'innovation en tant que co-développeur du projet de train à grande fréquence. Via Rail et ses employés continueront à jouer un rôle crucial dans le projet de train à grande fréquence. Le train à grande fréquence est l'un des plus grands projets d'infrastructure entrepris au Canada depuis les 50 dernières années et représente le plus grand investissement à destination des services ferroviaires voyageurs de la génération. Il changera la façon de voyager de long du corridor le plus achalandé de notre pays. This project would fundamentally transform passenger rail service in Canada's busiest corridor. Nous nous entretiendrons avec les peuples autochtones et les communautés qui pourraient être touchées par le projet et examineront soigneusement leur point de vue. I am pleased to see the value being placed on the participation of Indigenous peoples in the advancement of the High Frequency Rail Project. By working together with the private sector, we have a chance to execute this project as effectively as possible while creating socio-economic opportunities for Indigenous peoples. Lorsqu'il sera achevé, le train à grande fréquence offrira de nombreux avantages aux passagers, notamment des trains plus rapides et un temps de trajet plus court, des départs plus fréquents, plus de fiabilité en matière de ponctualité. Il offrira également des itinéraires plus directs et ont un lien amélioré entre les villes et avec les autres modes de transport. Ce projet vise à appuyer la reprise économique, des choix de voyage plus prog progrès et une infrastructure durable qui profitera aux générations à venir. And now, I'd like to turn it over to Laurel Lennox, who is the press secretary to Minister Algabra, who will moderate the question and answer period.
Merci, Annie. Um, alors, nous allons maintenant commencer avec la période de questions. C'est une question et une question de suivi par journa journaliste. So, we're going to get started with the Q&A portion of the event. It's one question, one follow-up per reporter. And uh, you can just use this microphone, so I'll step aside and everyone can line up here. Bonjour, Naomi Gelper du journal Métro. J'aimerais mieux que vous m'expliquiez un peu là, comment les entreprises autochtones vont participer au projet. Est-ce que vous leur demandez de vous contacter ou c'est juste une collaboration avec le secteur privé puis vous voulez vous assurer que les entreprises du secteur privé vont collaborer ensuite avec les entreprises autochtones? J'aimerais juste que vous précisiez euh, comment là, les communautés autochtones vont être consultées dans le projet. Merci beaucoup pour la euh, question. C'est une importante question. On va travailler avec toutes les communautés autochtones en collaboration. On a déjà commencé euh, les discussions avec. Euh, tout au long euh, du processus, on va travailler en collaboration avec euh, les peuples autochtones. OK, parfait. Vous dites que vous avez commencé des discussions. Est-ce qu'ils vous ont fait part de certaines préoccupations? Ça ressemble à quoi, leurs préoccupations? Euh, je n'ai pas entendu des préoccupations, mais c'est sûr et certain, euh, dès qu'on a quelque chose à, à rapporter, on va le faire. Merci. Hi, good morning. Tim Sargent, Global News. Uh, Mr. Minister, good morning. Can you just explain exactly uh, what will the benefit be for the, the riders in terms of this high-frequency rail? Will it be that it'll, it'll be much faster, it'll be fewer stops, it'll be more comfort? Could you just explain what's the benefit for the riders, first of all? Uh, thank you, Tim. Um, I think you basically touched upon most of the benefits. So it will offer more convenient options for travelers. Um, um, hopefully you get them out of their cars onto a train. It will get them, uh, and, and by doing so, in, in order for us to get there, we need a more comfortable, more frequent, hopefully fast, uh, uh, and a clean, environmentally uh, uh, sustainable trains that have very little, if any, emissions. Also, you know, and for, affordable and accessible. I shouldn't forget that. Okay. For years, you know, we've been hearing about a high-speed rail service on the Quebec City uh, Windsor corridor. I know that's sort of, pardon the pun, off the rails right now. But uh, how is this different from that? And why should the public believe it's going to happen when high-speed rail was talked about for decades? It never happened. This is still at least 10 years away. Why should the public believe this is going to happen? Thanks, Tim, for raising that point, because I know there's a lot of questions that people have, are having, and I know that many people uh, have been discussing this for years, and that's why I'm really excited about this. That's why the Quebec caucus, some of which are here, some are not here, have been pushing for this uh, for a while, because they know that this will me make a tangible difference in people's lives. Now, um, I understand people are skeptical or have questions, but I can assure you, uh, as I said, this is the largest project in Canada's history, and it's going to take a lot of work to get there. But what we want to make sure is we want to do it right. And when it comes to the aspect of speed, uh, frequency, uh, um, um, the type of trains, all those uh, questions will be addressed as we work with our partners. We're inviting partners or potential partners from around the world who have expertise in other jurisdictions, some of which in Canada, some of it out, outside of Canada, to, to share with us those, those expertise so we can do it right. Uh, but as I said, this is a large project, and what we want to do throughout this project is bring Canadians along with us. We, we know that much of the upfront work is being done behind the scene, um, that's why it's really important to communicate frequently with Canadians. That's why we're sharing the information about the various steps, the various uh, uh, initiatives that are ongoing. But it, it's really important to address these questions and respond with confidence. With uh, uh, and, and by the way, the last budget had a half a billion dollar just uh, uh, for this project. Uh, and work is uh, being done today to increase fluidity at the Durval station and other type of uh, facilities to prepare for this project. So work is being done. Uh, dedicated investment is happening as we speak. Today's announcement is going to be exciting for the private sector, for the residents of Quebec and, and Ontario. Uh, and, and, and we're going to keep providing information to Canadians so we can answer all of their questions. Merci. Bonjour, Stéphane Blais, La Presse canadienne. Euh, la popularité de ce projet-là va sûrement dépendre de la fréquence 
euh, des trains, mais aussi de la durée des trajets. Qu'est-ce que vous visez, même si vous ne savez pas encore exactement combien de temps ça va prendre, qu'est-ce que vous visez comme durée, par exemple, entre Montréal et Québec ou, par exemple, Montréal et Toronto? Et deuxième question, est-ce que les trains seront euh, électriques? C'est une bonne question. Honnêtement, je n'ai pas la réponse aujourd'hui, mais si vous voulez, euh, euh, je vous invite euh, de m'envoyer la question, puis je vais vérifier avec tous les euh, euh, professionnels qui travaillent dans Transport Canada pour euh, vous donner la, la bonne réponse. Il n'y a personne ici qui a, qui a une idée de la, de la durée d'un trajet? Ben, Montréal-Ottawa, Montréal-Toronto, bien Montréal-Québec? Okay, uh, Minister, um, sorry, I'm just going to repeat the question in English. Um, so the reporter is um, asking, you know, the popularity of this is going to depend um, on um, the frequency and also how long the trip is going to be between the cities, for example, between Quebec City and Montreal. And if it's electric yes, okay. And, I, and sorry, and um, if the trains are going to be electric. Okay, thank you. And I, uh, you know, thank you for accommodating me. My French is, I'm still working on my French, so... I apologize that I have to respond <laughs> in, in, in English. Uh, look, the, uh, it is really important to connect communities. It's really important to make sure that the people of Quebec, uh, people of trois rivieres people of Montreal, people of Ottawa, people of uh, Peterborough, uh, Toronto, all have these convenient, reliable, uh, green options. As far as the question about how, short, how fast the trip can be, That is going to depend on the type of proposals we get from our partners. That's why we're seeking expertise uh, for th from those who have done projects, complex projects like this. We want to offer the best package for Canadian uh, passengers. And, uh, and I, I'm really excited about the potential uh, that we're going to find. So uh, I can assure you that we're going to do our best to provide the best Uh, reliable, fast option for travelers. And yes, part of our uh, vision is to have a, an electric train or at least a zero emission train uh, uh, for this high uh, frequency pro rail project. Hi, uh, Julien Arsenault from uh, La Presse. Uh, Minister Agabra, the uh, news release is really short on details about, you know, con local content requirement. You talked in your uh, speech that you're seeking advice and interest from companies specialized in very uh, complex projects. So can you provide details about will, how much uh, local requirements will uh, be important that contract? And uh, should we understand that you're seeking uh, interest from companies outside the Canada? Um, we are seeking interest from companies uh, from within Canada and outside Canada. As I said, we want to do this project right. But I can assure you that local content is a priority uh, for this project. This project is going to focus on ensuring that we create jobs at home, that we create jobs for VIA, that we create uh, 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 an environmentally friendly option. So uh, uh, it is, it's certainly going to have, it's a, and, and also to collaborate with our indigenous communities. So uh, that, those are our priorities. We are seeking expertise from around the world because this is a unique uh, type of project. Some of it is at home here in Canada. Some of it may be abroad. We want to make sure that we explore all expertise and identify the best uh, options moving forward for Canadians. Okay. And, um On a follow-up, how problematic is the possibility, in your opinion, that uh, the Russian oligarch Alexei Mordachev could become a shareholder of WestJet if the deal goes through? Minister Champagne provides some new guidelines about you know, Russian presence in a, in a deal. So how should the, this deal should be scrutinized and, and could, could it be put on, on, on hold or could it be jeopardized because the president of uh, Mr. Mordachev? Look, first let me s uh, say a disclaimer. I want to avoid speaking specifically about this transaction because it will be subject to review, so I don't want to make any assumptions. But you will have to approve it. I will have to approve it when it comes to my desk, and I don't want to prejudge uh, the outcome. However, let me be very clear. Canada and our government has been clear in our steadfast support for the Ukrainian people, for Ukraine against 
uh, Vladimir Putin's aggression. And we have been leading um, it, with imposing strict and severe sanctions that is having an impact today on Russia. So hopefully they will reconsider and end their military hostility today before tomorrow. We have been also collaborating and, and leading the world in discussions with our allies and our international partners to collaborate and coordinate our sanctions. I can assure you those sanctions will remain in place until the hostilities uh, stop. And any type of economic activities, you've seen us close our airspace, you've seen us close our waterways, we'll, uh, we will continue to uphold those sanctions in all of our economic uh, activities. Are you worried that it's such an individual is, a, is circling around an important deal like that? Again, I want to avoid talking about a specific case right now because it's not at my desk and I have not ex uh, examined uh, all of its, uh, 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 its components, but I want to re repeat the broader message is that we are uh, committed to adhering to those sanctions, to those measures, until the Russian hostility ends. Yes, good morning, Minister. Um, I noticed uh, in the, ref in the, the last uh, announcement, uh, and, and today as well, you're, you're uh, talking about Trois-Rivières, the, 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 the train will stop in Trois-Rivières. So that um, makes it sound like uh, it's going to take the North Shore route of, uh, of uh, Quebec, between Quebec and uh, Montreal. So the question is, uh, there is a, a big tunnel in the middle of the mountain that has been taken over by the, the Caisse de dépôt placement du Québec uh, for the, the REMP project. Uh, how are the trains going to get to Central Station, and are you having discussions with the REM, or, is, or are the trains going to go to another station? Yeah, as far as I know, the train is not going to take the tunnel. Uh, it's going to go around uh, 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 the mount, so, uh, but it will still come to, uh, I, again, based on the plans that we have today, mm -hmm. and I again need to use this disclaimer that as we work with partners, uh, they come up with other ideas that we haven't thought of that will make things better, we will certainly uh, change our plans, but the plan is that the train will still come to Grand Central Station in Montreal, uh, but it won't go through the tunnel. And, and now this, this project was... Um in discussion when the REM was, was planning it. Uh, is this a, 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 a failure? Obviously, any, any way to go to detour the tunnel is, is, is going to make the trip longer. So is this a failure of the Canadian government not to be able to, to negotiate with the case to be able to use that tunnel? Uh, I, you know, building a high-frequency rail between the city of Quebec and Montreal and, uh, and the rest uh, of Ontario is going to be a massive success. It's not a failure. I would never, uh, I know many, many uh, Quebecers and Canadians have been waiting for this day. Uh, and I can assure you it will offer convenient, fast, reliable, green options for travelers. So uh, it's, it's a complicated project. As I said, this is a large project. It's going to require a lot of negotiations, a lot of compromise, a lot of uh, 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 decisions to be made. Uh, but this is the nature of such project of this uh, magnitude. Uh, but it will have an incredibly positive outcome for, for Quebecers and Canadians. Thank you. Bonjour, Chouane Pham de TVA. J'aimerais vous entendre davantage sur le contenu québécois ou canadien. Là, je vous vois devant un train Siemens qui n'a pratiquement pas de contenu québécois ou canadien, si je ne m'abuse. Dans votre discours, vous parlez d'un projet qui va bâtir la nation, que vous voulez protéger les travailleurs et leurs et leur bénéfices. Maintenant, est-ce que c'est possible d'avoir un peu plus de détails sur les exigences du contenu canadien et québécois, mis à part le volet autochtone? Merci. Merci pour la question. Comme euh, vous le savez, aujourd'hui, c'est la première étape de phase 2. On n'a pas vraiment commencé encore à, de, à parler avec les, euh, les partenaires potentiels. Donc, euh, tous les détails euh, vont venir à, à, à la prochaine, à, après le 31 mai. Mais c'est sûr et certain que notre but, c'est pour protéger tous les travailleurs du Canada et du Québec avec ce projet. Et deuxième question, 
C'est un train à grande fréquence et non à grande vitesse. Je comprends que vous avez choisi la grande fréquence pour accommoder Trois-Rivières et Québec dans le projet. N'empêche, est-ce que vous trouvez que ça crée une division entre le corridor Montréal-Toronto versus Montréal-Québec? Qu'avez-vous à leur dire? Et comme vous n'avez pas encore d'estimation sur la durée de ces trajets-là, qui, qui risque, dont l'économie de temps risque d'être minime, qu'est-ce qui vous laisse croire que, les, que le taux de fréquentation sera plus élevé? Est-ce que vous avez des chiffres sur le taux d'occupation actuel? Parce que les premières estimations qu'on a, c'est que pour Montréal-Toronto, l'économie serait peut-être de 30 à 60 minutes, Montréal-Québec, un petit 30 minutes. Donc, peut-être juste nous expliquer euh, cet aspect-là, s'il vous plaît. Merci. Bien, vous voyez, c'est un vraiment grand projet qu'on commence à, à parler aujourd'hui. Euh, c'est un projet qui va évoluer. Les coûts, euh, ça va dépendre. On n'a même pas choisi notre partenaire euh, pour ce projet. Donc, tous les détails euh, qu'on pourrait partager aujourd'hui ne sont vraiment euh, pas légibles. Moi-même, je n'ai pas des, des chiffres. Euh, c'est vraiment euh, difficile à dire aujourd'hui parce qu'on n'a pas euh, fait notre choix comme partenariat. Euh, mais, mais juste pour comprendre, parce qu'il y a une partie de ma question que vous n'avez pas répondu, euh, le taux d'occupation actuel des trains présentement, est-ce qu'il est fort achalandé? Euh, parce que ce que j'essaie juste de comprendre, c'est que même si vous ajoutez des fréquences, Qu'est-ce qui laisse croire que les gens vont embarquer davantage dans le projet, considérant que le, ça ne sera pas du grande vitesse? Donc, si vous me dites que le taux d'occupation est de 75 actuellement, est-ce que ça vaut vraiment la peine de rajouter d'autres fréquences? C'était ça le sens de ma question. Merci. Mais on a choisi euh, le train à grande fréquence parce que c'est beaucoup plus économique qu'un projet euh, de magnitude de, euh, un train euh, de haute vitesse. Uh, puis, c'est sûr et certain que les bénéfices pour tous les voyageurs, uh, uh, je crois que le ministre a déjà à couvrir avec sa réponse, ça va être plus économique, plus efficace, uh, vraiment abordable et surtout uh, très bon pour uh, notre environnement. Just, Mr. Elgebra, this summer you talked about, you know, potential cost of the project between six and twelve billion billion dollars when you were doing the, you know, the multiple press conference to announce the project. Is it still the ballpark or given, you know, uh, inflation, supply chain issues, should we expect to be higher than that? Yeah, you know, last year when I said that number, esti uh, that estimate, uh, um, my team reminded me that I shouldn't have said that because things are quite fluid and there's still a lot of uh, unanswered questions. So, uh, look, um, it would be premature of me to say, to estimate what the cost is going to be. As I said, there are still options that we need to nail down. Uh, the speed, the type of trains, uh, the partners, uh, all that stuff is still undetermined yet because we will rely on the expertise that we're going to hear from uh, potential partners. So I, for now, I, would, I think it would be wise of me to avoid giving an estimate because I really don't know yet. We, we know it's going to be billions of dollars. We know it's going to be a massive infrastructure investment. And we know we're going to keep an eye like a hawk on making sure that we spend taxpayers' money wisely and to get the outcome uh, that, it, that Canadians expect. But I, it, it's too early for me to give you a cost. So we should not take the ballpark as a firm? Well, it's important. It's taxpayer money. So just just to be sure. So we should not take your former estimate as a firm ballpark. Yeah, that was my estimate last year. Uh, I, I can tell you it might change, but uh, I'm going to avoid putting a number uh, to it because I, we have to wait and see what the options are going to look like. Um, I'm Christine Long from CTV. I'm wondering if Mr. Scarpaleggia can give us a grassroots sort of feeling. This train, this high-frequency train, is going to run through a lot of neighborhoods that you know, people that you know. What are the citizens asking? What do you think it'll change for them? What are you hearing on the ground? Well, so far I haven't had uh, too much constituent feedback. I think uh, a lot of people who live in the West Island travel to Toronto quite a bit. So the idea that there would be you know, more frequent service would be a good thing. Even myself, when I've had to go to Toronto, I have limited options. So that's the first thing. The other thing is there's going to be, um, VIA right now is working on 
upgrading the door valve station, uh, which will better connect better with the EXO bus station and with uh, with um, <clears throat> the um, the uh, the bus station and the the commuter train system. So that's going to be a major improvement for for the people of the West Island. But frequency, I think, is going to be very important, and also the fact that with dedicated track, there will be fewer delays. That's one of the great frustrations for travelers right now. And I think once you get rid of those delays, once you have a more frequent schedule, I think that's going to attract a greater ridership. But so far, we're waiting to see what the plans uh, look like on the ground. But uh, as you know, West Islanders are commuters. They, they, they like public transportation. And any option that makes that uh, public transportation uh, you know, better and improved, I think will be re well received. You think it'll be good enough to have people change their habits? I think people are already changing their habits, actually. Um, and I, I, think, uh, I, I think it will. I think when you consider the, uh, the time delays that are required uh, for flying to Toronto, if you can shave off 30 minutes, 45 minutes, and you can get a, a more frequent uh, departure schedule, I, I, I think that's going to influence a lot of people who have business in Toronto or who go to Toronto for pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so this puts an end to uh, today's announcement. Uh, thanks everyone for joining us. Alors ceci met fin à notre conférence de presse. Merci beaucoup tout le monde. Thanks everyone. Merci beaucoup tout le monde. Bonne journée.